Welcome to a new Safish OS podcast and this time around it's the review of the Sony Xperia XA2 running Safish OS. So for those of you who don't know me I'm running Safish OS for a long time basically since the beginning with the Yola One phone that I still have here and uh, it's running out of battery right now but you can see it's still running I'm using it as a developer device still and then I switched over through the iterations Yola C and then even the Sony Xperia X um, that I used as my daily driver up until recently so the beginning of this year I was a bit getting unhappy with this device and then the XA2 was still in beta uh, regarding Safish OS usage uh, so I got a bit impatient and then switched from this device to my Huawei P30 uh, which is running Android as you might know so this is my daily driver basically up until I tried now for a week almost the Sony Xperia XA2 running Safish OS 3.1 more than a one year old phone but now Yola has managed to get the first stable version of Safish OS version 3.1 out for the XA2 so it's not labeled beta anymore and I said to me I have to try it out is it daily driver compatible is it possible my newly, newly daily driver and yeah I tested it out and uh, for those of you who don't know the specs from the XA2 let's just do a quick rundown there are other videos I did other videos about the specs but a quick rundown Snapdragon 630 is inside 3 gigabytes of RAM 32 gigabytes of internal space uh, 23 megapixel camera on the back fingerprint reader 8 megapixel camera on the front uh, 3300 milliampere hours battery and uh, Wi-Fi ABG, ABNG uh, Bluetooth 5 and USB type C uh, 2.0 uh, are on board first thing that you will notice is uh, this display which looks kind of bit of outdated even for the beginning of 2018 when this device was um, presented Sony is not so fond of notches so they didn't follow the trend of notches in their uh, device lineup they still don't follow it with their newer, newer devices uh, so this has a full HD 9, uh, 16 to 9 aspect ratio uh, display uh, it's an IPS LCD display it's quite good display gets um, very bright uh, we are not very bright but it's for the middle class smartphone 500 nits I think it's okay and um, uh, sunlight visibility is still okay outside readability in sun is okay could be better 600 nits I think is the minimum I would go but 500 nits is still readable if you don't um, put it in direct sunlight it should be no problem you can see some examples running around it's still um, a good display also today has uh, very good blacks and uh, a very nice uh, colors the build quality overall of the XA2 is a plastic build um, that you might see it has rounded corners on the back and on the front and enforced edges uh, very clicky buttons even so you can see various different buttons um, uh, the power button is a bit small for my taste and the clickiness is not so great the volume rocker is much better and besides volume and power button there is also a two-time shutter button so for taking selfies or for taking photos but this two times shutter button yeah this two times really you cannot feel them when pressing it's a very very um, not really distinguishable uh, and especially also in Safish OS you don't really have the half press shutter, shutter button function that does usually the refocusing of something at least not with the XA2 you have this with the X that also has a button which is in my case a bit easier uh, to feel the two stages than on the XA2 but um, yeah there's different quality that you can feel simply uh, when comparing directly with the with the X but still it's a modern looking device even with the 16 by 9 ratio and it's a very good build quality nevertheless 
uh, that the exterior is made out of plastic. When we take a look at the back, we can see the 23 megapixel um, camera with an aperture of f2.0, which is um, backed by a, I think it's dual LED flash or one LED flash. And underneath the camera, you have a fingerprint reader. And this is funny thing, Yola decided to uh, make it a two time or two tap unlock feature on Selfish OS. So usually on Android phones, you just tap the um, fingerprint and it unlocks. In this case, what it does, if you tap on the fingerprint, it will present you with an unlock screen. And then you can enter either your pin or you can tap again to unlock the device, which is a bit unusual, but yeah, it works. One tap to wake up and one to unlock, basically. Uh, then on the front, there's an 8 megapixel camera with an aperture of 2 f2.4. Uh, um, camera shots, if you take a look at them, are good. And so the camera in general, the back camera shoots good photos in good lighting situations. But as soon as you zoom in a little bit, you can see that it's falling apart. And this is due to the relatively a wide angle they choose here of uh, 84 degree, which is around 24 millimeters in 35 millimeter terms. Uh, the details are a bit lacking, and especially if you zoom in, you will notice this uh, when you created a, an, uh, an image. By the way, only by default, 16 megapixel, uh, uh, megapixels are usable in the 16 to 9 aspect ratio. In the 4.3 aspect ratio, I think only 13 megapixels are usable in the default uh, Yola camera app. But you can get 20 megapixels by using the advanced camera app. I didn't found the fully 23 megapixel uh, option there, uh, but at least 20 megapixels you can get um, with the advanced camera app that you can get from uh, open repos. Interestingly enough is even if you use the uh, normal uh, Yola camera app, when zoomed in a little bit, just like for example my P30 has an equivalent of a 26 millimeters or 28 millimeters in uh, terms of uh, angle degree um, or in terms of view uh, viewing field um, if you zoom in a little bit only uh, with the um, XA2 even if it's um, slightly softer interpolated inter you can still get better shots better details for specially uh, text or other fine, finer structured uh, stuff uh, that you don't get by just cropping into an image. Especially I found out that if you use the zoom function for before taking a shot and take a shot then that you also have, you are nailing the focus much easier on the text for example if you like to uh, nail uh, focus on the text. It's so it's an interesting uh, idea here to see that you can get a more accurate focus and uh, you can read text better and some details are better when uh, zooming in which is I assume a software zoom uh, which is uh, done here but it shows a little bit that there is a potential maybe to optimize this whole thing though I don't have high hopes that Yola will optimize stuff there because it's basically the driver that uh, produces a JPEG and the camera just uh, gives you the JPEG. And uh, so the driver needs improvement. And when it comes to this, yeah, someone else is responsible for optimizing the driver. When it comes to selfies, so the front facing camera, um, the front facing camera is for emergency only. Forget the selfies. Um, it has noise all over the place and is a fixed focus lens. So it makes it hard to pinpoint the sh point of sharpness. So it's not really that big of a deal, I would say. It's there and you can use it also for video chat maybe, but don't try to even use it indoors because it will be full of noise. And of course, yeah, video chat might be um, masking the noise a little bit because it's a video, but uh, you can see still very much noise creeping in in the video and especially also in the photos which uh, make them almost um, yeah, impossible to use. Um, apropos noise, there is a lot and lot of noise in low light shots as well, uh, also with the main camera. So activate the flash is what I would say here. 
then you can get a lot better shots, a lot less noise, but there's a little caveat. Uh, by default, the auto white balance is not working so well when it comes to flash, so make sure you have set your auto white balance uh, to um, neon light before taking a flash shot, so then the uh, photo will not end up green with a green tint. When it comes to multimedia, the multimedia capabilities are quite good. Video playback uh, is smooth in HD or full HD, no problem. I didn't try 4K, I don't think the chip can support 4K, I'm not sure if it can decode 4K. Um, it doesn't make sense, it's full HD display, so full HD makes sense. Um, HD also looks good here. Uh, audio is surprisingly loud for a mono speaker, down firing mono speaker, but yeah, the sound is fine, loud, but it's pretty tinny, so ba uh, bass is lacking definitely here. And uh, it's good if you are using this for navigation, for example, and with the navigation instructions, uh, or if you're using it uh, uh, to make a voice call and, and, and using the loudspeaker. This works fine, but if you want to enjoy music, uh, of course, there's a headphone jack you can um, plug in headphones on the top and then you can solve this issue of uh, um, not very good uh, music or bass output and it produces a way better output than of course the mono speaker um, not comparable to an LG uh, V or G line for quad stack um, but it's solid middle class I would say uh, this uh, Sony uh, output um, for uh, headphones when it comes to performance, SafeGS 3.1 runs pretty smooth on this device. A bit of lag and stutter can only be observed when uh, web browsing with either the default web browser or a third-party web browser called WebCat. I'm the developer of WebCat, by the way. Uh, so you can see stutters when scrolling through web pages um, a little bit, but usually the UI works very, very fluid and there's, there are no hiccups when it comes to uh, the performance. Uh, SafeHS handles uh, the three gigabyte of internal um, RAM pretty pretty well. It has also swap space that is compressed into RAM a little to help the um, RAM management, the memory management a little bit. So this is also very good. But in general, I would say it runs pretty pretty smooth, and you can also open up many applications. Multitasking is working pretty fine on this device. I didn't have much problems with. Um, too much memory usage and closing applications as long as I'm not having Alien Dalvik the Android runtime running and then there we come to software the software size software SafeJS 3.1 features a native app store for those who don't know it so it has a Yola store where you can get uh, native applications it's a little bit limited in uh, the way that those apps can only do certain things on the system. If you want to have the full power, the full potential, there's also a third-party app store called Open Repos, and the a program for, for getting software from there is called Storeman, and they can get uh, pretty much every software that you can imagine from the Linux world. This means popular applications like Telegram or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or all the other apps are not officially in the Yola store or on OpenRapers or Storeman, but you can get uh, third-party apps just like um, Pingvini for Twitter or PeepMats for Twitter or other applications. You know my SafeJS app podcasts there. I showed you already some of the applications that are available for, for the SafeJS platform. Uh, I usually can live with the uh, many native applications that I have installed, uh, like a Telegram client that I've installed, public transport app, a web browser, video player, media player. Uh, so sometimes I need Android apps as well. And in version 3.1, Selfish uh, S ships, um, at least for the Sony Xperia XA2, the first declared stable build of Alien Dalvik with its Android runtime 8.1. So it's able to run applications that are very, very modern on this device in theory. In practice, of course, Alien Dalvik, let's come to the Android runtime for Selfish OS, a lot better than in the beta versions, I have to say. So Yola improved a lot of uh, things there. Uh, but is it stable enough? 
uh, for daily usage, I will say it's still not stable enough for my taste. First of all, what's Alien Dalvik? The Android runtime. The Android runtime allows you to run Android applications on your Savage OS device. This does not include Google Play services, so you are basically out of luck if you want to install Google Maps or YouTube. It will complain about Google Play services not installed, and then you cannot run those applications. Uh, but there are other options, just like Micro-G, for example, which is emulating, simulating Google Play service and other options to get them on your device, but this is not the topic right now. Alien Dalvik apps run sometimes um, a bit of weird, so the Android apps are not closing in the background, so they're running all the time in the background, which means, yeah, it eats a lot of battery as well, or they can eat a lot of battery, and you don't notice it because they don't have a window on the multitasking view, um, which is a bit of a bummer, I think. And there is no way to see them and to close them. And there's a way to see them, but uh, there's a native application called Crest, which allows you to see all the running processes, including also system processes, but you're not able to kill system processes. So uh, you have to use the terminal, command line, foo, Linux, foo, to um, kill those uh, processes if you find them. A window handling of Alien Dalvik, of Android applications, is a bit flaky, I would say. Sometimes Windows uh, won't um, jump to the phone gr foreground, so you, can, you have a window here running in the multitasking view, you click on it, and it's not jumping into the foreground, just like here the native app does. It's just you click on it, and it's trying to this is animating the jump effect, but it's not jumping into the application. You have to do press a lot of times for it to work. Or you sometimes have to start another Android app that goes to the foreground and then you can switch to the other app. So it's a bit flaky when it comes to window handling. Uh, jumping to the foreground, uh, old windows suddenly can also appear. Uh, just you have this here, you just rotate it and suddenly uh, an Android window will appear for some reason. Um, very, very strange. Um, and some other bugs, uh, like I have WeChat running here, for example, and uh, this things when it is active, I have it active in, in a chat, and I then uh, just turn off the display, it thinks still that it is active, and so it does not notify you when new, notification, when new messages arrive, so no new notification, no a new notification sound appears. So this is also a bit flaky and sometimes you miss the notifications which is hmm, and you, all you have to think about, ah, oh, I have to go back into my global chat history and then turn off the screen and then I get notifications. But it's not always happening so notifications is a bit flaky. Also, uh, this is not consistent notification when it comes to I have native notifications set and a native notification sound set but the Android applications can use their own notification sound. And sometimes they use their own notification sound, sometimes they use their uh, native uh, notification sound, which is also a bit of inconsistent, I would say. Um, apropos WeChat, it runs fine for chatting so far, despite this little quirks. But when it comes to video features, it seems to work fine also for video. I did a video chat already with this. But audio is not working because is uh, complaining about uh, accessing the microphone, not having uh, access to the microphone, or the microphone is muted. Something is the, the error message which appears, which is... Uh, I would really, really show you this right now, but I've been blocked from WeChat for some reason. I don't know. Uh, maybe they don't like Savage S or Android Runtime. I don't know. I've been blocked from WeChat and um, unable to unblock myself from another WeChat account, which is also a bit strange. Um, other limitations when it comes to the Android Runtime are limitations in terms of Bluetooth connections or direct Wi-Fi connections or something like this. If you want, for example, uh, connect to your um, uh, smartwatch or you want to connect to your uh, camera remote uh, application via your camera remote application to your camera. They usually have direct access, the Android applications usually have direct access to the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth networks and this is not possible within Alien Dalvik right now. So a bummer for those. But other things like web browsers, for example Firefox I have running here without uh, big issues. There's only one big thing for me a little bit. Uh, if you use Firefox Sync, it's not working for some reason. I'm not sure if it's kind of a limitation. Uh, I'm not sure why. It was working fine on my Xperia X. I could uh, sync up my bookmarks and pass passwords and so on. Uh, but it's not working on the new Alien Dalvik implementation of the XA2. Uh, I'm not sure why this is not working here. 
so it needs a little bit of work still, I would say. So it's declared be uh, out of beta right now, but I would say, uh, no, no, it's a bit too flaky. Uh, let's come to battery life. Battery life is an interesting uh, thing because it has only a 3300 million per hour battery. Uh, but SafeJS manages usually um, to get a full day out of usage out of this device, which is interesting. Um, because I, for 3300 million per hours, uh, I would say, yeah, it could be a little bit, depending on how much you do, it could be a little bit mm, not enough for this device. But yeah, usually I have to plug in my device at the end of the day. But this is only with Alien Dalvik running. So with the Android runtime running, and just like I said, it has the tendency to all the applications, Android applications that you start, they will never end. <laughs> they will never close those uh, Android applications, even if you close them here on the multitasking view. So I think if they manage to find a way, just like here on the Xperia X, where you could say which applications are allowed to run in the background, then and optimizing those apps if you close the android app then it will be automatically closed also in the underlying android runtime then of course i would think uh, you can get a little bit of better uh, better battery life out of it then because without alien dalvik running on the xperia xa2 i can squeeze out one and a half day out of it so a lot more than uh, with it running so yeah this is i think pretty pretty amazing one and a half day two days is possible I didn't measure screen on time, but uh, usually I think the, the, the day and screen on time depends also on what, what you're doing with your device. So if you're gaming or watching YouTube videos, uh, the battery drainage is much, much uh, higher than uh, just surfing or chatting with people. And especially watching videos here on this device, somehow I have got the feeling that it drains the battery a little bit more than... Uh, on uh, Android when it comes to watching videos. So watching videos here drains the battery quicker on Selfish S, I think. What might be only my subjective feeling here. Um, but yeah, I hope this battery life can be improved in future updates, especially in the Alien Dalvik section that uh, might get a little bit more clever when it comes to this. And uh, this is basically everything that I have to say about the XA2. Now let's go to the free software indicator. For those of you who don't know it, I usually, if I test devices just like this device in my German TechView podcast, I evaluate it. Uh, I evaluate here also the freedom loving of this product. And the freedom loving of this product means I give him points from zero, which would be totally unfree, to 10, which would be 100% GNU Stallman approved. And the Sony Xperia XA2 gets 7 out of 10 points, which is the highest score I ever gave to one smartphone. Because of, first of all, the bootloader is open and allows installing of alternative operating systems, just like, for example, Safish S. Uh, Sony's open device program is a great, 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 great thing for getting alternative systems going. Um, it not only gives you source code that you need, it also gives you help and it gives you a website and it gives you, gives you a forum where you can talk with others and chat with others when it comes to supporting newer devices. And uh, the XA2 is not the only device. The, the X is also in the open, so open um, device programs. The new X uh, period 10 and 10 plus is in the device program. And the XZs are in the open device program. So it's a very, very good program. Uh, this alone deserves two points already. And, of course, this all results in the not totally dependent from Sony when it comes to software updates, because you can install alternatives. You can install alternative, uh, alternative operating systems like Selfish S here, which usually have longer support um, uh, time frames when it comes uh, to direct comparisons with uh, the Android uh, counterparts. Um, but it did not get more points due to some restrictions. First of all, the restrictions in the camera, because the camera uses a, this is basically a driver which is totally, totally, totally proprietary, so much that it needs firmware blobs that are on the device that get removed as soon as you open up the bootloader. And yeah, this is bullshit. This means then basically if you even install an AOSP version on Lineage S on this device, you will have worse camera quality 
than before because the firmware blobs that do the magic in optimizing the image got removed and there's no way to restore them which is also yeah so this is one big big failure in uh, terms of uh, sony devices and also the open device program they have everything almost to get um, even more points also other points other two points that they don't get are for uh, drivers are closed source and uh, firmwares are closed source and of course the baseband is also closed source so this is why only seven out of ten but i say only it's the highest value that i ever gave for a smartphone so since the beginning of the free software indicator in my videos so i think it's uh, pretty much a very good device so my conclusion here now of the device itself and running safe 3.1 as the first stable build of the xa2 it works fine most of the time if you can live with its limits like the slightly not 100 percent stable alien dalvik or the occasional bugs here and there that you can encounter for starters you don't leave your smartphone connected to a power source when starting it up as it will start up without a status bar on top so um, of course this can be fixed and i'm pretty sure safe 3.2 will have many many fixes for the xa2 as well but uh, this is a test of the current version that i have here in my hands uh, for Linux users, this device I think could be very interesting. Uh, it provides a real GNU Linux system to tinker around with, with SSH access, terminal, Qt, and basic smartphone stuff without depending on Google services or any other services for that matter. Uh, it might be something to look into, especially if you are such a Linux user. I will keep my XA2 as a um, daily driver as my secondary smartphone for navigation, texting and other stuff I usually do when I don't like to use my P30, which will be my main device, which will stay my main device, I think. So the XA2 running Safish S is a good device and uh, for people to tinker around with. Uh, using it as your standalone smartphone, I would say yeah you have to be very picky what you need when it comes to smartphones and um, when it comes to what stuff of applications you need to run so if you have smartwatches if you have cameras that you want to control remotely if you have uh, online payment systems or payment systems in general that you want to use with nfc if you want to use nfc at all there is NFC here inside, and chip inside, and Safish S also has the option to uh, get some information about the chip uh, and use the chip, but there's no real implementation to using it or no real API for using it uh, outside of reading just small NFC tags. So um, applications are not able to connect uh, to each other via NFC or there is no payment system uh, option uh, in the API currently for using NFC with. So if you can live within the limits that Safish S give you on this device, I think it is a pretty good daily driver as well and can be used um, with, of course, some hiccups here and there. And hopefully uh, those will be uh, then fixed in future releases. Uh, I'm looking forward for Safe 3.2 on this device and uh, the other many other versions and improvements here on the device. I would say right now, if you are deciding, do I want to buy, do I want to pay 50 euros for this device? I would say, wait a little bit. If you have an XA2, you want to try it out, download the free version, check if you can, um, maybe you only need the native uh, f um, applications you don't need the android support but if you want the android support later on you can just simply say okay i pay the 50 euros and i get the android support even if the android support is not running well with 3.1 it's still i would say uh, has room for improvements uh, maybe you get a later version 3.2 3.3 or something like this um, or other alien dalvik updates that will fix those issues and provide you a better experience so for now i would say try the free version out and then if you really 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 like it and want the android support then you can buy it for 50 euros but for now i would say um, keep using the free version uh, first of 3.1 and then later maybe 
with 3.2, 3.3, I will do an update video if uh, bugs get fixed or not, and if this device is really, really use it as a, a secondary smartphone, as I said, and I will keep using it, and I will keep you updated when it comes to this device and some other future devices, uh, also of the Xperia lineup. There's another device coming shortly, hopefully. That's everything for this uh, little review. I hope you enjoyed it. You can give it a thumbs up. You can ask questions down there. And you can, of course, um, uh, click and subscribe to my channel if you like to see more stuff on Selfish S. You can also take a look at my playlist. I have a Selfish S playlist with, I think, starting from 2013 even. Uh, and you can see if you want to take a look in the history of Selfish S and what apps are compatible compatible which games android games are running on it and so on and which apps are available for it and how do i get store man open repos how is this all working how do i get ssh access everything in videos on my uh, playlist self just playlist on my channel i hope you enjoyed it and uh, until the next time bye